The last one I want to speak about, which I think is really unique to your to your footy career and, and to, to to the AFL, is your your contracts, and and it's a bit on the back of coming into the to the AFL as a, like a, as a mature age draft pick. There's, there's not many people that do that, um, especially over the, you know, the past ten years. It's getting a little bit more, but you don't see many guys do it. And then kind of just you know re- researching for this for this podcast, like the way your contracts gone, you got delisted at the end of 2020. Is that right? Yep. And then re-rookied, so yep. like pre-listed by the footy club uh, with Buells yep. uh, and rookied. And then I well, I don't know if you're still on the rookie list or you certainly spent some a bit more time on the rookie list under contract. It's just been a really unique uh, contracted footy career so far. Yeah, it has, yeah. I've, I've Yeah, it's, it's been crazy. I remember speaking to Blake Akers last year and he was saying he's never played. Last year was the first year he'd played – in his final year of the contract. And I said, I haven't played in not a final year of my contract. Really? So, yeah, after – so draft, yeah, 2019, oh, I got a two-year deal to start. So 2020, yes. but you sort of – it's a locked-in contract. 2020, COVID year, COVID hit, yeah. list sizes were getting cut. Um, so all year – I played every game that year. So I was like, oh, surely I'll get a year, get a contract. Um, all year, Wolsey was like, in close contact with me and my manager and was like, look, mate, we want to give you a contract. We just don't know what list size is going to be yet. Right. Um, and we've already – because they had already signed a lot of guys the year before for the following year, I was in – I was like one of maybe six blokes fighting for three spots or whatever it was um, purely because we were the only ones out of contract, so we were the only ones that they could they, they then delist. It's just bad timing. It was just horrible timing. And then um, – Got to the end of the year, still hadn't heard anything, still waiting on list sizes to be announced. And I was just like, this is horrible. This, this yeah. is not this is not gonna happen. Is like can't this can't happen. And then they announced list sizes and then they announced that rookie list sizes were gonna be a bit bigger. So primary list was gonna shrink, but the rookie list was gonna grow or something like that. And and, and you could pre-list ahead of the rookie draft. Yeah, so, they- so you could delist and relist without actually having to put someone through the rookie draft yes. in right. case. I know another team poaches them or whatever. I don't know what it's for, but so they've done that with me, and they actually said they actually gave me the option of oh, I won't go down that path, but um, but from becoming so obviously when you get delisted, you become an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, so that's the other unique thing. You're so, a de- you're an unrestricted free agent. Yeah. Now. So I'd, instead of playing seven years, I've had to play two and I've become an unrestricted free agent. <laughs> Which when it comes to negotiating deals, it works in your favour because like, yeah, you've, got of, yeah, you've got a little bit of – Yeah, you've got a little bit of power all of a sudden. That's what that rule's meant to be for. It's meant to be for players who stay at a club a long time, give them a bit more power, but should have just been delisted. <laughs> Straight so. in. I found a loophole. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they come to you and say they delist you and then like we'll just pick you straight back up. So that's, that's – I mean, so you didn't have to go through that. Am I ever going to play again situation? Yeah. 100%, yeah. That's and then, so, yeah, then they give me a one-year deal on the rookie list. Yeah. Um, got through that year and then... You played 20 games in that year. This, yeah, the rookie so, list year, yeah. yeah. And so then, you played seven in your first, 17 in 2020, which was all the games. Your rookie listed year, you played 20 games. So yeah. even though you're on, you're on these rookie contracts, you played every game. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I was at first I was pissed off. I was like, this is so unfair, like... How could you do this? So I've played every game. Like, it's just so a bit disrespectful, or whatever. But probably that was the immature, passionate side of me, just being angry at not getting my own way again. And yes. Um, and then so yeah, that year, that next year, I just went through the year as it was and got offered a new deal. And um, and as as it turned out, because I was an unrestricted free agent, I actually had a bit of interest elsewhere. And Hawks came pretty hard. Hawks coming hard, right? Um, and it, yeah. To be honest, I actually got pretty close to to looking at going up, getting away, but just because of the shit that had happened the year before, I was still a bit of bad blood almost. Mm. Um, I was still a bit pissed off, but um, definitely made the right decision to stay. Um, and um, and then yeah, so I, last year I was on the rookie list again. First year of my new contract was on the rookie list again. Going into this year, they just said, "Oh, we're putting you back onto the primary list." So I think this year I'm back. I don't. I to be honest, I don't even know, but I'm pretty sure I'm back on the primary list. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. I, I just think it's so unique, just seeing the ups and downs, and it's been a journey, mate. Like you, it has, yeah. 
And you're not a journeyman. You've been I've like, played five years. <laughs> <laughs> but you've just been, you've been incredibly consistent, right? Mm. So reading those that story, if I just didn't say your name and I said, all right, this player comes into the competition, 20 years old, he plays seven games in his first year, then he plays every game effectively in the next three years, but he spends time on a rookie list, he's an unrestricted free agent, uh, he's, you know, he's getting interest from other clubs. Like it's just really – Cool. I think it's like a positive thing, to be honest. I mean, you, if I know probably at stages it would have been hard for you, but so you seem like the sort of person that the way you play footy and just speaking to you now, that that's built some resilience in you. 100%, yeah. And to be honest, like my whole footy journey going up from a kid has been exactly the same. It's all huh. been – there's always been a bit of um, controversy around it and, uh, and it hasn't gone away since I made AFL. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just so embedded in it now and, and I love it and embrace it and, yeah, I'm just happy about where I am today and playing footy every week and playing on a good side and um, just being happy. 